Okay, welcome to Sparky Help. This is the easy guide to Star and Delta motor connections. So first things first, we need to look at how it would be helpful to look at how a sine wave is generated. If we understand that, then the motor replicates what is being generated. So here we've got a coil, a magnet, and when you pass the magnet and rotate the magnet near the coil, this is what will happen as it turns to 90 degrees the north as passes by becomes peak and as it goes away it drops to zero and then finally before south comes up to it it becomes a peak but negative before coming back around 360 degrees back to zero and that's how you create one sine wave in the power station or in your generator or in an alternator or wherever it is that produces ac but obviously we want three phase so we have exactly the same and i've just shown them here three coils l1 l2 l3 and we have the same magnet and it will rotate and induce a current and voltage into each phase in turn as it rotates round creating the three phase sine waves as shown in one of my earlier videos so as it goes round peaks in each one at a different point in time the magnet can't be in two places at once and that creates the sine wave and it creates the rotation l1 l2 l3 and if we were to swap any of these two over the order would also change it would then go l1 l3 l2 which would give a different rotation okay which will help explain if by changing two phases over in a three phase motor why the rotation changes so what do those look like inside a motor well here's a motor been taken apart for you and you can see it just looks like a mass of windings around the outside and this is called the stator and through the other side if you can see in the middle there that's called the rotor but that's for another video so there we go, there's the stator, and there are three phases in here. Those three phases are displaced by 120 degrees. And we can show that because there's our brown phase, and yes, that's supposed to be brown. And 120 degrees, there's our black phase, and there's our grey phase. But as you can see, that leaves loads of gaps, and you can see in the copper windings there, there are no gaps, so therefore they need filling because that would be inefficient. So what basically happens? after you've got your L1 and L2 and L3 in, is they continue winding. So the L1 continues on the opposite side. So they sort of overlap each other. And then the black phase continues winding over the other side. And the gray phase continues winding. So you, it looks like one continuous mass of copper going round there, but it makes it more efficient with no gaps. But for demonstration purposes in the earlier version I just showed you with the magnet going around, it's easier just to show single windings. But in reality, they do a start and a finish of the winding, which they will identify the finish of the windings generally by a dash to indicate it's been referred. It's the end of the winding itself. So that's how the windings are set out in three phase motors. Therefore, that gives us six ends. Uh, if they're going to be star or delta, the manufacturers will connect them as such bringing three ends out for you to terminate with if in like this case it's up to you how you're going to set it out they will bring all six out so the six terminals come up and because each one of these is a coil l1 l2 and l3 so let's look at the coils and what they how they label them so there's our three coils and when it comes to motors, they label them U, V and W. Don't ask me why. I'm sure someone could put a message on and explain why it's U, V and W, but this is the standard that we have. Each end of each winding is labelled number one. And yes, you guessed it. If that's number one, then the other side of each winding is number two. So you have U, V and W, ones and twos brought up to the terminals. Each of these then can be connected in turn. So they can be permanently connected in star, permanently connected in delta, or you can have the combination of the two. So let's look at these then. So there's our three phases, there's our windings, and we have a U, V, and a W. And in this case, I've got ones on the outside, ones on the outside, ones on the outside, and to turn them into star connection, all the twos, connect together but it would equally work exactly the same the other way around so all the ones in the middle and the twos on the outside makes no odds so there's our terminals how do they do that 
Well, the manufacturers, when they produce these motors, they provide these three links because it's down to you set up. Brass links, they go across the terminal posts. So they're at space, so they slide on and you just put the nuts back on them again. So to connect them into star, we short one side out. And they have been shorted out there. So you put all three on, put them there just in case someone wants to change them, then you can use them. So they're shorting those connections out. How do we then connect it? Well, as you can see on here, the way it's labelled, it's U, V and W at the bottom. But at the top, it's W, U and V. They put them out of sync, but you'll see why in a minute. But it makes no odds here. They could have been any order, providing all the ones connect there, or the twos connect, and that will work. How do we then connect up on this? Well, we connect our three phases on the opposite posts and our CPC onto the chassis to provide our earth connection. Obviously the direction of the motor will determine whether you put L1, L2 and L3 or L1, L3 and L2 or whatever combination you wish to go but check rotation before starting. So that would be star connection. And if we do this, what this allows us to do because of the star connection, if we have a 400 volt supply being applied, then you have a voltage across the phase which would become 230. So although you are not supplying a neutral, you end up with 230 volts, because 400 divided by root 3 gives you 230, thereabouts, and you end up with 230 volts across each of the phases, which basically means you have less current, and if you've got less current and voltage, it is less power. So it's less powerful. It doesn't change the speed. The only times it might change the speed if the power isn't sufficient for the load. But we'll look at that in a bit. The other type of connection, you could have it, you could have it permanently set to delta. So there's our delta again. There's a U, V, and W. And we have them numbered. There's number one for the U, number one for V, number one for W. So they're opposite ends. The reason for that is because we're going to connect the twos together to those opposite ends. So I've got U and V connected together and V and W connected together and W and U connected together, twos and ones respectively, in each of the corners and then the phases come off. Obviously there is no way in the world you could ever run a neutral to a delta because there's only three connections full stop, not that you're going to. Now we have these terminals, so here we've got them here and we've got them, the brass links again to put them in. And they go across directly opposite in this occasion, which is why they give you three of them. And this will explain now why they stagger the connections. So U, V and W ones across the bottom. And at the top, it goes W, U and V twos. And now when you connect, you've got a one and a two from each opposite coil connected together. How do we then connect onto it? Well, it's very straightforward. We bring our L1, L2 and L3 and our CPC onto our chassis onto a set of terminal posts. Doesn't matter which side you go on, but just obviously check direction because it could be L1, L3, L2 for direction, but just check rotation, but it doesn't make any odds. There's our connection. What does this allow it to do? Well, this one now has because VL equals VP, the voltage across each phase now is 400 volts. And if you've got 400 volts, then the current is high and therefore you've got more power. So this is a much more powerful motor. But again, we'll look at this on an, how much power you've got on another video. So this is more powerful than a star connection. So why star or delta? Well, it's all to do with current drawn from the supply as well as power. So why would they want to give you the option? to do a star and delta. Well, let's look at if we put it direct on line in star or delta. And delta would be more significant, but it does depend on the load. But the principle remains the same. So what we've got here, we've got current drawn from the supply up on the vertical y axis and along the x axis across the bottom, you've got time or speed of the rotor. So let's take a motor and it's full load running current and let's indicate it that's where it would be. So when it's up and running on a given load, that's its current that it will draw. What happens when you turn this on? This is what happens. So the current goes up enormously and you have this large inrush of current, which would be much, much higher than the rating of the load, which could do some damage to the motor, could do some damage to your cables, could take out your circuit breakers, could burn the motor out, could take out the overload of the direct online starter, which is why you put overloads in the direct onlines 
to protect the motor because circuit breakers don't give you that sort of fine protection and hence the type B's, C's or D's even if you're going to put different circuit breakers on to allow for this large inrush. As the motor speeds up that inrush will drop and this will all happen quite quickly hopefully. Um, if it's there too long then you'll burn the motor out which is not good and hopefully the overloads inside the, the starter would kick in and pr help protect the motor which could be quite expensive. So that's what happens if you do it direct online. So why do in star and delta? Well, remember what we said is that in star and delta star has a lower voltage across the phases, delta has a higher voltage and therefore the power is different. So let's take the same motor again and you'd use the configuration of these contactors which you can buy which do the connections remotely and they're set by a timer. This timer here you would set by the manufacturer whatever it happens to be for the load to give guidance on how long you set that timer for. So it could be just a few seconds and I think we can just about see on there it might be 20 seconds that went up to. So it does depend how long it will take that motor to get up to speed. So what happens then? It starts in star and finishes off in delta. So now let's take a full load current. There's our current again of our motor. That's where it wants to be. And this time when you start it on, the contactors connect it into star. And then after your set period of time, they change over into delta. So this is now what happens to the current. So you don't get one large peak. You get slightly smaller peaks, but two of them. And we get an inrush and the inrush is going to be the bigger one out of the two which probably will be the one that starts it up because until you start the motor running that's when the current starts dropping off so there's our inrush and remember what we've got here then this is our star starting our first inrush and this is our change to delta after the preset time by the installer whoever that happens to be and then as it starts to come up to speed providing the load remains constant that current will drop back down and you can see the inrush is much much lower and the motor is coming under less stress by using this it's quite crude but it, it's very effective what we have is more up to date uh, variable frequency drives of vfd there are some other things called soft starts as well uh, they're all quite expensive but then all things are quite expensive now and if we look at this what this allows you to do because a variable frequency drive is electronic it can change the frequency it can change the voltage it can alter the current that goes in and can really control it. And you can program it to do whatever you want it to do at different speeds, ramp it up, ramp it down in speed, whatever you wish it to do. So they're very good. So let's take a full load running current of a particular motor. And this time you would connect it into star or delta straight away, whatever one you want it to be in. And then you'd run it back through this. So there's your full load current. And what you can program this to do is you can program it to ramp up. And it, that's basically what it will do. There might be a little bit of surge on some soft starts. Uh, if you've ever put in a dimmer switch and when you press the button, the lights gradually come up and then when you turn them off, they gradually go back down. That's like a soft start and um, that's more or less what it will do. So it's just a way of controlling that input and gradually turning it on as opposed to the previous versions, which are a bit like a sledgehammer, really. They really just whack on the power straight away and off it goes. Um, this is a bit more gradual to get to that starting and running scenario. So I hope that's been insightful uh, and helps you understand a bit of star and delta electrical connections. Thank you very much.